Hi there. We may or may not have a lot of meteors in the sky tonight, but we definitely have one with us here. It is the coolest launch from the portfolio of Royal Enfield in 2020, the Meteor 350. Now this name, Meteor, has been derived from the 1952 Super Meteor, which was one of the legendary bikes from the Royal Enfield portfolio. First came the Lightning 535, then the Thunderbird in different configurations, and finally they've come across with this motorcycle, this beautiful looking motorcycle called the Meteor 350. Now it is the recent and the most latest from the Royal Enfield lineage to allow you great touring capabilities while cruising at 110 speed. So this is Shahbaz Abdani welcoming you back to your favorite YouTube channel on Way Mechanic. Tonight we are not going to review this motorcycle, we are going to test its touring capabilities on the highway all night long and reach the hill point to catch the beautiful sunrise. So come with us. All right, uh, while I'm waiting, so I've taken a halt in this harbor. So while I'm waiting for my tea, let me tell you about the motorcycle and its specification. This comes in with a 349cc single cylinder motor, right? And uh, it is a four stroke oil cooled and air cooled motor, which is a SOHC engine, uh, which produces 20.2 bhp of power and uh, pretty much around 27 newton meters of torque, right? So that's the power figure, but uh, talking about other things, it has a telescopic 41mm shock up at the front, the rear suspension is two spring coil, then if you talk about the tires, you have a 19 inch at the front and then you have a 17 inch at the rear. Pure cruiser setup, right? While it also allows you a great ground clearance of 170mm. While they've reduced the tank size from a 20 litre coming from a Thunderbird to a 15 litre on this one, but still, it would give you a long run, right? 15 liter isn't that bad. The height of the motorcycle is 765 millimeter, which is adaptable for a lot of Indians, right? But if you still want a lower seat height, Royal Enfield is offering options which can help you reduce the seat height further, right? Uh, with an extra cost, you can add a low right seat. Talking about the braking power, you have a 310 millimeter single disc at the front, then you have a 270 millimeter disc at the rear. Uh, occupied again with a dual channel ABS. While this uh, engine produces a lot of power, but when you're running on the highway, you know, you miss that sixth gear. Because on the fifth gear, it trebles around that 110, 120 mark, and that's when you need that sixth gear to go further. While the Royal Enfields have been infamous for their vibrations, this motorcycle would feel as smooth as a Honda CB350, right? They are using the same kind of technology. They have this balancer shaft in the engine, which counters the balance on both ends and, and produces a less vibrating, powerful engine. Although, you feel some vibration on the seat when running at a speed of 100, 110, but that much vibration is required, you know, because you've got a sense or feel that mechanical thing of the motorcycle, right? So, I think that's a little bit about the specification. Let me enjoy my tea. I'll come back to you right there. Uh, taking a quick two minute break by the street then we'll go ahead to my destination I have to catch the sunrise you know 
So just another hour of ride and then we'll be there. Oh, so you're here. My plan to catch the sunrise failed while I reached here in time. But this beautiful weather and the clouds you know, put across the sun in the shadows. So while we cannot catch the beautiful sunrise, we were able to catch the beautiful winter morning with this fog, if you see it around. Now, this night cruising experience on this motorcycle, I'd like to summarize it for you. This machine looks like the previous, uh, you know, Thunderbirds, but is different in its nature. This new motor is very refined very less vibrations although you feel some of it on the saddle and on the foot pegs but that much you require to have that mechanical feel for the passion of motorcycling when it comes to the power of the motorcycle i think it has that thump which you require on this kind of a motorcycle when you want to cruise at a 80 90 kilometers or maybe 100 kilometers an hour right on the handlebar unlike the classic bullets you don't have that vibration so you not have the buzzing sound in your ears or in your hands uh, talking about the things that I liked about the motorcycle, the seat is very comfortable, right? So even if you ride it for, I think, three to four hours straight, it would not give you a pain in your back, right? You have a great support on your tailbone, though this rear shock hubs are right behind your rear tailbone, right? So it might give you some extra shocks. Even if you talk about the pillion seat, so in my 190 kilometers that I did on this motorcycle, I also got an opportunity to get a civilian on this motorcycle. And that pillion, when I asked them their experience, they also felt pretty comfortable. This backrest helps also. Uh, talking about the other things, I like the LED DRL, but then they missed out on giving the entire LED setup. They still have a halogen hand in the front. The indicator is again halogens. If you talk about the sound, obviously this motorcycle is BS6 compliant, so you don't have that sound, very less of noise, but then Royal Enfield offers options of customizable exhaust pipe. I love the alloy wheels, the design on it, which comes as standard from the company. Now when it comes to the cluster and the dash of this motorcycle, another thing that I love about this one is this beautifully designed dashboard, right? You have a lot of information, it's clearly visible, a very comprehensive meter. You have your speedometer in analog, then you have this small digital LED screen, which is very bright, gives you great set of information, your trip A, trip B, trip C, your gear indicators, your fuel gauge, uh, time, and everything. Then it also comes with this small unit, which is your tripper navigation unit, which at idle shows you the time. But then when you connect it to the rider app from Royal Enfield, it gives you turn-by-turn -turn navigation in comprehension with Google. Now, that's one thing. But when you look at these uh, switches, right, while they have designed in a classic way, they're very modern, they're very robust, a very good feeling, right? The handle feels pretty nice and sturdy. So overall, if I had to rate my experience on this bike, I think that's a good choice for people who are looking out for a cruiser to tour across the country. This is very comfortable to tour on. You can do a lot of kilometers without taking breaks. Now, specifically, if I talk about this motorcycle on three fronts, first would be design. I think there are a lot of design elements which have been taken over from the Thunderbird. Though the tank size is smaller in comparison to the Thunderbird, the overall fit finish of the motorcycle is world class and looks, you know, suave. So I like the overall design of the motorcycle. On a scale of 10, I would rate it at least 8.5. When you talk about the performance of this engine, I think this is a very new and refined engine and the motor feels very great. It's got a great thump and a great power. So overall, in terms of the performance, I think I would rate it around 9 on 10 because less vibration, more power, more power in earlier RPMs. So that gives the bike a very thumpy feeling, a very rigid feeling. Third would be the comfort. I think it's a pretty comfortable motorcycle, except for the minute vibrations that you feel when you go beyond the 100 km mark. I think everything else is very smooth and uh, you know very linear on this motorcycle. So on comfort, you have a comfortable riding position. 
your hands are straight, your body is straight, your back is straight, your back is well supported, your foot pecs are right in the front, so you sit in a so like you sit in a position like you're sitting on a sofa, right? So it's a great position for a cruiser motorcycle. Plus, you also have that 170 millimeter of ground clearance, which gives you another level of comfort when you're riding it on the highways, right? So I think overall on on comfort, I would give it again nine out of ten. So that was my review, guys, about the Meteor 350. Overall, I love the design, the color is fabulous. So yeah, I think that was it guys, after 190 kilometers in this motorcycle, I simply love it. If my purpose is going on long tours across the country on a motorcycle, I would definitely have this one on my list, right? Uh, so I, I leave it to you. This was my review of the motorcycle. For more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel, share our videos, like them, give them a thumbs up. If you think you want to add in some suggestions, please go to the comment box down below and write whatever you feel like and we'd love to see you back on our videos thank you very much for watching this is your favorite youtube channel on we mechanic and this was shabazz signing off for today